Hey everyone, I hope you're as excited as I am today. Welcome to our virtual brain injury awareness rally. I'm Sherry Petty. <laughs> and I'm Tim Horton. The purpose of this rally is simple. A call for action. March is Brain Injury Awareness Month and we challenge you to get involved. Our objective is to empower and support brain injury survivors by bringing awareness to those living with brain injury. This rally is an opportunity for the Brain Injury Association of Virginia and Community Brain Injury Services to extend the reach of their services. It's also an opportunity for professionals to network and for our guest speakers to tell us why being an ambassador is important to them. We'd also like to support caregivers by giving them the opportunity to share their stories, to express how brain injury has impacted their family and to provide them with resources and support available within the community. I attend the Millhouse Clubhouse for survivors of brain injury because I had a stroke resulted from a carotid artery dissection. That was my brain injury. It's important for me to be my own advocate because it gives me an opportunity to learn from and meet other brain injury survivors and also share recovery and coping strategies. I attend the Denby House Clubhouse in Newport News. I received my brain injury from an automobile accident. I love advocacy, whether it's for the organization, for other survivors, make that warriors, or educating the community because it gives me a sense of reward knowing that we have the strength and the power together to create change. It is my pleasure to co-facilitate this rally with Tim. As you all know now, March is Brain Awareness, Brain Injury Awareness Month, and we challenge you to get involved and become an ambassador. We encourage you to speak out and to educate the community on brain injury. We'd like to introduce Erin Tyra, from the Brain Injury Association of Virginia so that she can explain in further detail how to use our ambassador toolkit. Hi everyone, uh, like Tim said, my name is Erin. I am the communications manager for the Brain Injury Association of Virginia. And I am really excited to talk to you a bit more about being a brain ambassador. So not just in March, but all year, we need ambassadors just like you to use your social networks, to spread the word about brain injury, show support for those with lived experiences and build awareness about resources in the community. And we have made it really easy to do this. We have two toolkits for you to use. First is an ambassador toolkit that explains a bit more about what being an ambassador means, why it's important, and some easy ways to put that into action. And second, we have a social media toolkit, which has information about the different platforms and content you can actually copy and paste. And as a bonus, we have a folder with social media graphics ready for you to download and use as well. We really encourage you to use your social media as a way to spread the word, talk to your friends and family about why this cause is meaningful to you, and finally, be a voice in your community. So thank you all so much for being here today and showing your support for Brain Injury Awareness Month. We hope you all will join us as brain ambassadors, not just for the rest of March, but all year. And the toolkits I mentioned are all available on our website, which is biav.net slash be an ambassador. And of course, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Again, my name is Erin and my email is erin at biav.net. I will put those in the chat so that you can uh, have those for reference later. And again, thank you. Thank you, Erin. Oops. Chair, you're muted. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, we have several speakers on our agenda and a separate time for question and answers at the end. We'll ask that everyone stick to their time slots so we can stay on schedule. We also encourage you to use the chat feature to ask any questions you may have.
Our first member speaker is Deborah Jones, a Denby House member representing Community Brain Injury Services. Good afternoon. My name is Deborah Jones. Dr. Martin Luther King once said, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. The CDC estimates 1.5 million persons a year sustain a TBI. So now is the time to give voice to the silent epidemic. On 11th of September of 1987, I became one of the 1.7 million. I was a battalion S1 at Four Story. While driving home, I fell asleep and hit a tree. I was given a 20% chance of survival. The Army wanted to send me to Walter Reed Army Hospital in Maryland because there were no facilities in here to address my need. But I did receive treatment at a rehab program called Head Trauma, which is no longer in existence. I was able to return to work, but I could never be the officer I was before. The Army discharged me on a very low disability rating. I found out about the Debbie House while volunteering at Riverside Rehab. So this clubhouse has changed my life. The Debbie House has helped me turn my traumatic setback into a dynamic comeback. I work in all three units continue to gain independent living skills and computer skills. I take pride in being an advocate for brain injury survivors. I enjoy working in the advocacy and outreach unit because it gives me an opportunity to speak on issues that are important to me and to inspire and help other brain injury survivors. The Fortune 500 company that employed me told me that traumatic brain injury is not a disability. Well, <laughs> I shared this with my case manager at the Denby House. She called them and gave them the brain injury one-on-one -on -one lesson. <laughs> Needless to say, my long-term disability has been reinstated. So you see, without the Denby House, I would not have an advocate with the knowledge, resources, and support to obtain my benefits. The Denby House closes office doors in March due to COVID and has since reopened with COVID restrictions. For the past eight months, I've stayed connected through Facebook and virtual clubhouse meetings. I've built a strong rapport with my case managers and they've gone above and beyond to make sure that I'm safe and reaching my goals. So you see, our membership is helping all of us turn out traumatic setbacks to a dynamic comeback. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Andrew Stiff, who is also a Denby House member. Good evening, everyone. My name is Andrew Stiff from Hampton, Virginia. I served in I serve my country for, uh, with honor and dignity. I served in the military from January 24th, 1987 to December 31st, 2015. The way I received my, my tra traumatic brain injury was, was by colliding into another person while playing soccer twice. The third time, was when I was serving, when I was served in Iraq in 2000, 2011. I had a premature rupture in my Achilles tendon. I, I almost, I also fell down several flights of stairs in the building where I worked at. I was out for five minutes. When returning to my unit, at Fort Hood, the doctors could not find anything serious. But well, returning, turning from Iraq, I was dealing with TBI, death of my daughter, having ADHD and dyslexia. When I returned to Hampton, Virginia, as a civilian, the VA hospital diagnosed me with polytrauma, brain injury. 
there was no services available to me at that time. Evenly, I worked with the Department of Aging and, Re and Rehab. They assist, assist me by connecting with me at the Wounded Warrior Project and later referred me to the Denby House for Community Brain Injury Services in Newport News, Virginia. Me and other veterans have to deal with PTSD, suicide, drugs, homelessness, and lack of stable employment. Having a bad experience at the VA, the state of Virginia, and this discriminatory labor laws, the right to work law, are also barriers to veterans, people with disabilities. I was employed, I was last employed November of 2019 and been diligently looking for employment ever since. Having a brain injury creates my barriers in my life, but programs like the Denby House have helped me tremendously. During, during the pandemic, I, I participated in virtual services offered by the Denby House like Chair One Fitness and Social Hours. When now that I'm I'm returned back in person in person services, I'm working toward my my personal goals, which includes employment, financial planning, and assessing my local community resources. Thank you for, for having me, for having the opportunity for me to speak in front of this subject. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew, both for your service and for your talk. Next, we have my good, my good friend, Alfred Fields, who is a member of Community Brain Injury Services and the Mill House Clubhouse. He will speak next. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Alfred Fields III. Um, I'm a brain injury survivor. Uh, I received my brain injury from an aggressive viral infection. Uh, I've been a member of the Mill House uh, for almost two years now. Uh, attending the Mill House before COVID-19 and now is equally engaging even uh, with changes made to make things safe and work for everyone. Virtual activities allow us to stay engaged in minimal mill house tasks, as uh, well as maintaining our social connections with staff and members. Our in-person attendance, uh, uh, sorry, our in-person attendance has changed uh, by combining the maintenance and communications uh, teams uh, together. Uh, this way, we have the opportunity to perform familiar tasks uh, with a few additions uh, for, ensuring our, for ensuring our safety. Uh, we have the opportunity for, well, sorry, for ensuring our safety during this time. There we go. Uh, through the Mill House, I've, I've also uh, got the opportunity to become a member of the Communications Committee with the International Brain Injury Clubhouse Alliance. I'm happy uh, and grateful that the Mill House was able to provide hybrid attendance to us during these times and grateful that the Mill House, uh, sorry, during these times, sorry, I should have made this bigger, as well as assisting uh, me with uh, reaching my personal goals. One of those goals was finding a new job. I'm now a new member of the Staples team. Um, I'm a technology specialist there. Uh, I really enjoyed the time I spent at the Mill House and I will continue to do so as long as I'm able to. That's all. <laughs> Way less Thank than you, three minutes. Thank you, Alfred. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Pain. Who <laughs> was also a Millhouse member. Go ahead, Eric. 
Hello, my name is Eric Mann, and I'm a brain injury survivor. My brain injury occurred in June 2019 in the emergency room after I had an accident on my mountain bike. My wife and I were on a camping trip with friends when I crashed my bike into a rocky, dry creek bed. I don't remember the accident itself, but I do remember being in a great deal of pain afterwards. As it turns out, I had a fractured vertebrae, multiple broken ribs, and a collapsed lung. In the ER, I went into respiratory failure, which led to an anoxic brain injury. I spent five weeks in the hospital at UVA, eight weeks of inpatient treatment at Sheltering Arms, and three months of outpatient therapy, having to relearn the basics of life, eating, drinking, communicating, walking, and many other activities of daily living. My injuries from the mountain bike accident have basically healed. However, as a result of, my, of the brain injury, I was not able to return to my job as a manager of risk analytics with Dominion Energy. I also have physical impairment from the brain injury that continues to be a challenge. Currently, I attend the Mill House, a clubhouse for survivors of brain injury in person on Tuesdays and virtually the other days of the week. I participate in daily clubhouse member meetings, advocacy and standards committees, a weekly exercise session, and other activities. Attending the Mill House connects me socially and gives me meaningful work to do. It has given me a chance to continue living my life, to participate and contribute to the community and society. This is due in part uh, to the friendship I have established and the support and assistance of qualified uh, and committed staff. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Now it's time for me to introduce the first of our guest speakers. Karen Grazinali is a caregiver and co-facilitates Community Brain Injury Services Caregiver Support Group. Thank Go you, ahead. Tim. Hi. My name is Karen Grazanali. My husband was hit by a car from behind as he jogged with his friends the morning of February 8, 2016. He spent the next two months in ICU, unaware of what happened to him, and then almost two weeks in a rehab facility that wasn't prepared to deal with the issues presented by his brain injury. Yet, it was the only option available to us at the time. So my husband checked himself out and we went home together to figure it out. It wasn't easy. In fact, that first year was absolutely terrifying. When I look back on it, I'm amazed that we survived it. About a year or so later, we stumbled onto the Dimby House. And from there, we began to learn about resources like the Brain Injury Association of Virginia, the many programs at VCU, and all the subspecialties available to help my husband. I was relieved that my husband was getting help, but I was also emotionally exhausted and became clinically depressed for the first time in my life. I needed help. And at the time, all the focus was on my husband. I am a brain injury ambassador because I know firsthand that a brain injury impacts more than the brain injured person. It impacts the family too. As family members, we grieve the relationship that we lost with our loved one as we try to build a new one. As family members, we encourage our loved ones to take their medication, stick with their therapies, use their compensatory strategies. As family members, we miss the ease of life before as we pause so he can process repeat when he doesn't remember, listen to intent when the words don't make sense, and reassure when there's nothing else left to do. As a brain injury ambassador, I envision a community that supports the whole family during their brain injury journey. I am advocating for a smoother transition from rehab to home that engages the family provider well before that person goes home. I am advocating for case management for the whole family, including kids and teenagers. 
and family and marriage counseling that's covered by insurance. I'm also advocating for crisis intervention for caregivers. Believe it or not, I get calls from caregivers often. Um, I've gotten texts at 2 a.m. And so crisis intervention, intervention is more than support groups for me. It's something that's available when that caregiver needs it. And lastly, I envision mentorship programs so we can help one another and legislate legislation that makes it all accessible and affordable. I am a brain injury ambassador and you can be one too. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. I'd like to introduce you all to our next guest speaker, Alexis Perkins. Alexis is the founder and creative director of Chair One Fitness. Hey, everybody. I feel incredibly blessed to be here right now. As she stated, I'm Alexis, and I am the founder and creative of Chair One Fitness. What we do is we like to break down barriers, making fun fitness options available to anyone, no matter their age and or ability. Um, I'm really excited that we have instructors who are currently at the Denby House. Yamise, I know she's on the call. Thank you, because you're doing our work of being a blessing to others. We like to create a fun environment because, let's face it, brain injury and brain trauma isn't easy to deal with. People have to go through rehab, rec therapy. They have to deal with things to strengthen their, their brain activity and their bodies. And sometimes it just always feels like therapy. So what we did was we wanted to create something that was fun for others to do while reaping the medical benefits. Inside of all of our choreography, we had activities of daily living included into our movement, but they're just kind of masked with fun moves. We put a lot of work into the background, making sure that we have movements that stimulate both the left and the right side of the brain. And the reason why I wanted to be an advocate is because when we started Chair One Fitness, it was like, okay, cool, we can just create this program. But as we dug a little deeper and started talking to people and seeing what conditions they had, what their daily struggles were, it really connected me to the cause and the different benefits that somebody could have. And I said, wait a minute, we have the ability here to be a blessing to others just through movement, fitness, fun, and especially music. So I know I just have three minutes. Um, so I just wanted to share with you a message that I had received. And when I think about brain health, it's also those who are recovering from injuries, going through rehab, and also their mental health as far as depression, anxiety, anything of that nature. So a message that I recently received from an instructor of Chair One Fitness who had to stop due to injury. And she sent me this. Dear Alexis and team, I want you to know what a positive impact you have had on my life already. I'm 65 years young, leading a group of active seniors with the intention of getting my certification in order to lead them on Zoom. After a back injury and now a bone spur in my knee, I had to start using videos on demand. I purchased them a few times because I couldn't lead on my own due to the pain. My seniors love you and your team and have the videos on demand have helped them tremendously, both personally and professionally. Two weeks ago, I lost my 45 year old son-in-law to a horrible car accident. My grandchildren were seriously injured and my daughter and our whole family have been devastated. The pain we are in seems insurmountable at this point. A few days ago, I thought I was losing my mind. So I pulled up my chair and started my chair one fitness routine. I was by myself, but it wasn't for long before I glanced into my daughter's living room and saw that she was doing some of the exercises from the sofa. We were both very tearful, but we did the exercises and it felt good. You, your team and the chair one fitness routines have saved me. I just want you to know, because we all need to know when we're having a positive impact on others. Thank you for your program, your strength and positive reinforce, reinforcement. So it's messages like that that made us realize we can make a huge impact. And that's why I would love to just be an advocate for this because that's what we're here for, to make a difference, right? And um, so I'm thankful for all those who have already participated with Chair One Fitness. We wanna to continue to be a resource and I wanna to continue to hear from you guys to let us know if there's anything else we could do to be of service. That's it. <laughs> Thank you, Alexis. Daphne Eaton, who represents the Virginia Veteran and Family Support East Region will now speak. Hello, thank you for having me. Again, my name is Daphne Eaton and I'm a resource specialist and I'm also a 
family and caregiver support coordinator with the agency, we can be reached by calling our regional office at 757-224-5208 at extension 2208, and I'll provide that in the chat. But we fall under a state agency, which is the Department of Veterans Services, and under that we have six service lines. And before I get to exactly what I do, we have the benefits program that work with veterans to get them connected to federal and state benefits um, after their discharge from active military service. We also have education and training that ensures that every veteran or eligible person has an opportunity to, meet, to reach his or her fullest potential by using um, their GI Bill for education, training, or some type of certification. Virginia also has the care centers that are located throughout the Virginia. It's um, operated by Virginia and they're state-of-the-art facilities. One is in Richmond and one is in Roanoke and we're gonna have one soon that's gonna be um, available in Virginia Beach. And we have the War Memorial, which is a memorial to honor the fallen heroes to pass on their stories of their sacrifice to future generations. And they do outreach and they do educational programs. Then there's a Veterans Services Foundation that supplements funding when state and federal resources are not available. All the contributions are made to the foundation and they provide direct service to specific programs. Then moving toward the program that I represent, it's the Virginia Veteran and Family Support. It's statewide, we have four regions and we are locally here for the East region. Um, our main office is in Hampton, but we're spread out throughout the area and we have different cities and counties that we're attached to. The main part of our program works with veterans and families, getting the veterans of any service era, doesn't matter their discharge status, doesn't matter whether they served in combat or not. If they're a Virginia veteran, we have a special emphasis to work with them, most particularly with post-traumatic stress and traumatic brain injury, and as well as military sexual trauma. We work with the family members as well. We do what's called care coordination, and we work with family services, which means we do an assessment of what they need and connect them. We're not there to duplicate what the services are and we're not the VA, but our job is to assess what they need and try to come up with a plan that best meets their needs and then help to navigate them through the system. If that means helping to understand the system or if it means going through some red tape, we're here to support them. We also assist with homeless services. We're not there to provide housing, but we navigate them through homeless services that can help them to become housed. We have peer specialists that are specially trained veterans that have certifications to work with veterans that have been on the same or similar journey. Uh, we also have a criminal justice reentry person that works with those that are incarcerated and, and newly soon to be released into the community. And we've always worked with caregivers, but we've expanded recently to work with caregivers um, we've always had couples and family retreats and connection to resources, but we are doing things a little bit different now to expand and enhance what we're doing. And it's basically what we're doing with uh, veterans and families through our resource specialist connection. The difference is we are assessing what the caregiver needs are, helping them with their journey, helping them to understand their new normal. Maybe it's learning about their role, learning about uh, crisis, uh, where to go and what to do when they're in crisis. Self-care is a big thing, time management, um, suicide awareness, um, just navigating. So we're not there to take the place of the VA or take the place of any other resource out there. If they are working with a um, agency um, that's maybe for healthcare, but they need some additional needs for themselves or maybe more information on resources in the community, such as the Denby House, then we would gather the information that's needed, share it with them and help them to navigate and then do a warm handoff. Again, we're not, not here to duplicate, but here to be a support to them. And we're here to help that caregiver and family member, whether it's a mother, father, sister, brother, or even a battle buddy, help to understand this new normal and help to understand how important it is to have self-care and to utilize those community resources. We hear short term and we address um, their problems um, in a short term way to do a warm handoff. It's important for us to be a brain injury ambassador because we're here to promote the awareness of brain injury and resources. And we're here to not just assist veterans, but their families. And that would include caregivers because caregivers are on that journey as well. So we're here again to support 
and we will refer to the brain injury and all the other organizations that are out there, uh, whether it's through the VA system or if it's in the community, particularly if it's a veteran that cannot go to the VA. So I will include our regional contact information in the chat which people can contact our regional office if they're a veteran or a family member. However, if they're a caregiver and it's about caregiver related matters, then I will also include my direct number for that since I'm the subject matter expert as they call for caregiving with our agency. Um, so I'll make sure I put that in the chat for everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Daphne. Our, <clears throat> next on our guest speaker list is Chris Miller. Chris is the Director of Brain Injury Services Coordination Unit for the Department of Aging and Rehabilitative Services, better known as DARS. Thank you. Um, as has been mentioned, my name is Chris Miller. I'm the Director of the Brain Injury Services Coordination Unit at DARS, which is the Department for Aging and Rehabilitative Services. I knew I had to become an ambassador for brain injury just over a year ago when I found out that brain injury is among the top causes of death and disability. Virginia has a system of community-based services that served 2,200 people last year. It includes case management, day support, clubhouses, personal care assistance, and many providers offer additional support like residential services, counseling, and as you've all learned to do in the past year, telehealth. When we look at the impact of those services, and I think we're seeing them right now today on, on this, this Zoom meeting, this rally, we see the value of brain injury survivors. But 19% of Virginia counties have no services at all. What would happen if this was true of any other chronic medical condition, that services were available to only 80% of the state? And now that you know, don't you think that if you're not already, shouldn't you become a brain injury ambassador too? Thank you. Well, thank you, Chris. Great information. It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce you all to Senator Monty Mason. Senator Mason serves the peninsula's first district, including parts of Newport News, James County, Williamsburg, Hampton, Suffolk, York County, and parts of Virginia Beach, in, excuse me, in the Virginia Senate. Hey, thank you, sir. Thanks for having me today. Hello, everybody. And most important of all of those localities, the Denby House. <laughs> so some folks may come from outside of my district to the Denby House, but I'll wrestle my colleagues for them because the Denby House is right in the middle of my district and I have thoroughly enjoyed going over and interacting and building and making friends there over the last several years. So I think it's super important to be an ambassador for brain injury because that's how I learned about the whole thing. My first year in Richmond, a group came up and sat and talked to me, and I made some friends that day that I have kept throughout the course of the last eight or nine years, but they taught me the first step about the issues associated with it, all the great things being done in places like the Denby House and other clubhouses and through DARS. Um, Ms. Miller just talked about all the work that they're trying to do. My job in the General Assembly is to get them resources and money so they can do it. And it's because of the ambassadors that came to meet me very soon after Jason came to a, to a, a nonprofit expose or I, I don't know, it was a morning that nonprofits got together and talked about all the things they do, the successes they have and the challenges and the obstacles that they face. And so I went to him and said, hey, I just met some folks. And from there, just, just because of ambassadors for, for the Denby House and for brain injury, I was exposed and, and developed a small understanding. And then over the past eight or nine years, I've had the real privilege of working with you, uh, coming to the Denby House, seeing you up in Richmond. I missed seeing you and everyone else this year as the Richmond General Assembly was an unusual event this year. We met in person at the Science Museum, but didn't meet any people because of, of course, the pandemic and we're all being super careful. But we, we had a fun Zoom. Uh, get together the other day that I thoroughly enjoyed being a part of. And so I, I think the most important thing I would say, whether it's you're talking to legislators or just other folks in the community, spreading the word and exposing your great folks, your great participants, your great members to different walks of life and people in the community is how we all learn. It's how we all understand the great things being done and how much many, how many more great things we could do if we had the resources, if we had the financial backing. 
but you know, from the city level to the state level to the national level, not just people that do things like that, that, that represent you in the legislature, but, but people throughout the community, you and, and, and we all becoming ambassadors for, uh, for, for, for brain injury and, and just really opens the door, I hope, for other opportunities. For, I kept scrolling through, there like five, six screens of people here. So we've got a huge community and a huge group of people doing wonderful things, contributing and being a meaningful part of my district and this state and this country. And so by us all becoming ambassadors, we can tell more people about it. We can interact more with each other and we can help people on the men. So I really appreciate you including me. Thanks for the friendship that, that we've uh, developed over the last several years. I'll look forward to it continuing in the future. And uh, thanks for letting me be a part of this. Have a great, what a great day. Thank you, Senator DeMason. I'd like to introduce a delicate price. Delicate Price represents the 95th district, which includes parts of the cities of Hampton and Newport News. Yes, hello, thank you. I, I am Delegate Sia Price, and as mentioned, I represent the 95th district, which is part of the district that Senator Mason represents. Uh, and I'll drop my contact info in the chat, but I'm so happy to be here for this rally uh, and just has really touched my heart hearing the unique stories from amazing people about your stories of triumph. And as we heard earlier, dynamic comebacks. So yes, for the comebacks. But uh, like Senator Mason said, we work together in the General Assembly to pass bills that impact all Virginians. And in order for us to pass bills to help those with brain injuries, we really have to hear from the people with lived experiences, meaning we have to hear from you. So imagine there's this big empty space that has to be filled with words. Well, if brain injury ambassadors don't speak up, that space might be filled with myths and misconceptions and assumptions about you, and that's just not fair. But when brain injury ambassadors speak up, we can fill that space with your own words. We can learn your truth, uh, your experience, your needs, your identity, and your story. So what we need as legislators is for you to be an ambassador for the issues that you care about so that we can hear them directly from you what you're going through, what's going well, but what needs to be improved is where we can really, really focus. So you can tell us things like what programs you really like so that we can put money behind them so that they can stick around, um, services that you're having trouble finding, um, experiences that you're having so that we can better understand you. And then all, of course, supports that your family and caregivers may need. And there's no need to be nervous when talking to us. You can speak with us with confidence because who is a better expert on you than you? And so let me tell you, brain injury ambassadors really make a difference because two things have helped me have a better understanding as an ally. And that's knowing and loving someone with a brain injury and having the Denby House come visit me every year at the General Assembly to tell me what they need. Like Senator Mason said, we would always look forward to Brain Injury Awareness Day because that's when groups of members would come tell us what you need. But we need to hear from you more than just that one day. And so y'all did such an amazing job helping me that I've become an ambassador as well. And I talk with other legislators about how we can prioritize your needs moving forward and that you are there to hold us accountable. So we better get to work. But again, I am so happy to be here at this rally to let you know your voice matters. And we in the General Assembly have to keep hearing from you. We need even more ambassadors to speak up as we work together to make this a great Commonwealth for all of us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Delegate Price. Now for some remarks from our executive directors. But first, I've had a request <laughs> for more cowbell. <laughs> <laughs> um, first up is Dan McDonald, who is an executive director of Brain Injury Services or Brain Injury Association of Virginia. Oh, more cowbell is classic, Tim. And Sia, you just make me smile. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Ann McDonald. I'm the executive director of the Brain Injury Association of Virginia. I began my career as an occupational therapist in brain injury rehab at Sheltering Arms Hospital and I've worked here for 20 years. 
and I am passionate about this cause and have been an ambassador for it in one way or another for my whole professional career. In all those years, I've seen struggles and miracles, despair and joy and hope. I have seen what appropriate, affordable and accessible services mean to those who get them and to those who do not. And we have seen the difference advocacy makes. Since 2005, we've worked together to get about $5 million in new funding for community-based services. We've worked together to pass laws that protect kids from playing sports when they've had a concussion, to support them in the classroom, to require crisis intervention teams, to train their members about brain injury, and to expand eligibility for brain injury services in public schools. You know, around 1 million Virginians have, have sustained a brain injury, and many of those are called mild. But we know the effects aren't always mild. They're often unrecognized and discounted. And even when the injuries are very serious, people are being discharged sicker and quicker from rehab and therapy. We know people aren't getting the treatment they need to get better and reclaim their lives. Many studies have shown a link between brain injury and domestic violence, homelessness, mental health issues, poverty, unemployment, and becoming involved in the justice system. And we need to change that, and we can change that. There are nearly 300,000 Virginians who have a disability related to traumatic brain injury or stroke. And while our service system is better than most in Virginia, BIAV estimates less than 2% of those individuals receive community-based services that could help them and those who care for them. Alone, we are strong. Together, we are stronger. Because we have worked together, Virginia has created a system of state-funded community brain injury services because people like you decided to be ambassadors, to tell your stories, to use your voice to help others and to create a better future for all of us. But we still have much work to do and BIAV is committed to supporting your advocacy. You can find more information about ways to support our collective efforts toward justice and basic human rights for those impacted by brain injury on our website at BIAV.net. Thank you for being here today and thank you for your hope for a brighter future. Thanks to all our speakers for their passion. Thanks to Delegate Price and Senator Mason for their advocacy, ambassadorship, and encouragement. Special thanks to Tamika and Yamis and Aaron for all their hard work making this rally a success. Remember, coming together is the beginning, keeping together is progress, and working together is success. And let's keep it going. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. And Following will be Jason Young, who is the Executive Director of the Community Brain Injury Services. Hello, everyone. And uh, gosh, this is just so exciting. I, and I'm so glad to see so many faces and just scroll through page after page of people who are, are revved up and excited to be a part of our brain injury rally today. Um, before I would talk about why I'm an ambassador for brain injury, I, I really wanted to say a special thank you to Yamis Lawrence, uh, Tamika Shelton, um, our partners with the Brain Injury Association of Virginia who partnered with us, um, and specifically our advocacy and outreach units at the club, at, at the Mill House and the Denby House, who, who were the real reason and the real guiding force behind putting this on today. And I, and I believe that they all have some signs that they want to put up right now, so I want to give them the opportunity to show those signs up. All right, well, thank you guys can keep them up as I, as I talk a little bit here. Um, so why did I become an ambassador? Well, I spent many years working in and at our clubhouse program. So on a daily basis, I'd see our clubhouse members, they'd walk in the door with a smile on their face, a friendly greeting, ready to work for the day. And, and working at the clubhouse made me realize the immense challenges that different people have to face. How things like just getting up ready, and going in the morning um, for a clubhouse member was an entirely different experience for them than it would be for me or for a person without a disability. Did, did I have to wonder if my ride was gonna show up? Did I have to take any number of medications as a result of my brain injury to help me sleep, to not have seizures, to manage some other medical condition my brain injury left me with? 
did I have to rely upon others to help me with things that I was able to do independently prior to my brain injury? No, I didn't. And then I would ask myself, would I show up at the clubhouse every day with a smile on my face, a warm greeting, ready to work? Well, I don't know how I could answer that question. And frankly, I don't know how any one of us could answer that with a yes or a no without having walked a mile in the shoes of those who've had. So in life, we all have choices to make. We can choose simply to accept the cards before us, or we can choose to live our best lives despite the stark circumstances of those cards that have been dealt to us, using our learned experiences to help others and to help ourselves. And I think every one of our members, our clients, our family members and caregivers have chosen the latter. And those are the people that I wanna walk this walk with. Those are the people that I wanna be an ambassador for and an ambassador with. Um, and I just want to leave with an example of, of the power of what our collective voices can be as ambassadors for brain injury. This past fall, we've had dozens of meetings were held around the state with, with state delegates and senators to bring awareness as to the needs for more funding and services for persons with brain injury. Countless survivors, family members, caregivers, and other ambassadors for brain injury participated in these meetings and they made their voices heard. Well, the Virginia General Assembly heard those voices. And just a few weeks ago, they approved $1.2 million in new funding for brain injury services. This is one of the largest infusions of new funding for brain injury ever in the state. And this is gonna result in, in just a sea change of services for, for per persons that didn't have access to it before, but it's also gonna help so many more people find their voices and find their community as those who have spoke on this call today have found theirs. So I just wanna have everyone, let's make our voices heard and make our voices count as ambassadors for brain injury. So I'm gonna turn it over now um, to our wonderful clubhouse director at the Denby House, Jessica Dupuy, who's gonna be uh, kind of facilitating our, our question and answer session here. So Jessica, the floor is all yours. Thanks, but first, more oh. cowbell. Oh. <laughs> We didn't know it was a cowbell. Uh, you needed to bring your cowbell to the to this event, but we should have. I think we had um, pom pom somewhere, but I, we do have a chant, and I'm going to slip that in, even though it's not on the agenda. I'm calling an audible. We are going to do our chant in a little bit at Demi House, but before then, does anyone have any questions for our speakers? First of all, thank you guys all for speaking. It's just been so phenomenal to have this sort of event to to put out there. But anyone have any questions that they want to go ahead and ask? If you want to unmute yourself or ask them in the question box, the comment box on the side. I'm going to hide behind Andy. I'm so excited too. I think we've got our um, uh, program in Illinois, the Synapse House. One of our clubhouse uh, partners is up there, is on. Um, mm -hmm. Is there anybody else from one of the other clubhouse partners in a different state who is on here right now? Okay. No. Hey Synapse. Hi. How Sorry. Are you guys? We're good. We're good. The, the members are actually working out right now. So oh. but they got the, <laughs> can't take that away from them. But the they were all watching everyone uh introduce themselves during their half hour lunch break. So awesome. We're super Thanks. excited to be a Thanks part of coming. this with you guys. Thanks for inviting us. Yep. Um I don't see any questions. So it's as provided that we don't have any questions, I'm gonna go ahead and call the Audible and have our members at the Denby House lead us in their impromptu chant that they've done for uh, Advocacy Month here. So Denby House, you wanna take over for a minute? Can I ask a quick question? Yes. Before uh -huh. we begin? Um, uh -huh. I'm in North Carolina and I was wondering if anybody, uh, or who would I contact in terms of finding out if I could, uh, I don't know, develop a house of our own, or if there's somebody in here from North Carolina, because I'm unsure. So Gateway House is in North Carolina. That is one of our clubhouse partners. Um, if you go to braininjuryclubhouses.net, it has a list of our clubhouse partners and Gateway House is down there. But I know that they're also gonna have an association as well. Anne, do you wanna address that? 
Sure thing, Jessica. Thank you very much. Yeah, the Brain Injury Association of North Carolina is led by a man named Daniel Pittikin, I think is his name. Anyway, I could get you the contact information. I'll see if I can't put it up in the chat real quick, but the Brain Injury Association of North Carolina would be able to help you figure out different ways that you might be able to advocate to increase the number of brain injury clubhouses. One is great. Uh, Virginia has five. We'd like to see 10 and we'd like you guys to have 10. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I also saw somebody was asking about um, clubhouse programs in Illinois because we had talked about that. And yes, Synapse House is in Illinois. Um, I would also direct you to braininjuryclubhouses.net to, to get their information if you want to look that up. We had another question from Andrew at the Denby House. Andrew, do you want to go ahead and ask your question? Yeah, question. Um, I've been to Denby House since 2016. And and then also I've been working, trying to work in and out of the system since 2015 till now. Um, I, I wanted to address, I wanted to address um, all of the people and also the um, General Assembly need to, um, I would think, I would like to, as we have um, disabilities and all type of um, disabilities, is there any laws that y'all need, what y'all need to do to me is to all the, all the labor laws, y'all need to go ahead and flush those down to go ahead and re, y'all need to go ahead and uh, recall all the laws, that, um, especially the labor laws, because, because of my disability, two times I got fired from jobs and I could not. And right now I got a blacklist on me on at the shipyard. So um, all the stuff is good and everything, but it needs to be more than that, especially for, for people with disabilities and people with um, all type of traumatic brain injuries. Because we are we are important also. We are we are important. So is there any laws or anything that we can we can go ahead? and do to make make a, a brain injury day or month or you know awareness or something i mean i, I know y'all passing marijuana law yeah that's nice well and good but they need more laws we need more laws to protect protect the labor protect protect the person hey, and also we need to get paid hey andrew this is hey, what the hell, girl? <laughs> so i did want to let you know um you know sometimes Sometimes government moves slower than it should, no excuses. But we did pass a bill this year, House Bill 1848, that um, the chairman of the uh, Health, Welfare and Institutions Committee did. And it adds discrimination on the basis of disability to the Human Rights Act. And so that's the Virginia Human Rights Act. And so that uh, we are, um, I believe, waiting for the, the governor to sign it but we're also, um, by, by that, it means that if something happens, we can say that it was, actually the governor did sign it and it goes into effect July 1st. But that means if something happens on the basis of disability that you now have a law that says that that shouldn't have happened. Now I'm not a lawyer, so I can't say, give you legal advice on it, but I can point you to that bill and I can send you guys some more information, but we are working in the right direction. So now what we need to do to make sure that we're working in the direction of fair payment and equal payment, but we did get um, no discrimination on the basis of disability added to that Virginia um, Human Rights Act. Yeah, because we need, we need, we need, we need to, y'all need to make that. Um, I know it's too late for me, but, but, um, and also the right to work, also, right to work. Y'all need to get on that. We call it. Thanks, Andrew, and I appreciate the passion that you have behind that. I know that's been near and dear to your heart, so I'm, I'm glad to you spoke up. Any other questions that we can we should take before we go ahead and close? Well, I just want to say something. I don't have a question, but I'm just so emotional right now. I miss you guys. Um, I wish Diamond was here to see y'all or be there, but um, I 
just want I just want y'all to know is keep her her prayers and hopefully she can make it back to get back in there with you guys. I miss y'all. I love y'all. Thank you for the letters. Thank y'all for keeping me, you know, up to date on things because I like to hear stuff like this. Mm -hmm. I appreciate y'all so much. No problem, Mona. I'm just so glad to see you. I'm glad to, I didn't notice that you were on, so I'm glad to, to hear from you. We're really thinking yeah, about it. Yeah, I'll keep y'all updated on her. Thanks, Mona. It's great All to right. see you. Um, Hi, um, this is Tony. Um, I just had a quick question um, for the representatives. I know that um, the budget, in the new budget, um, there is an increase in money for brain injury this year. Um, is it going to, has it totally passed and what does it look like we're gonna get? Jason or Ann, do you wanna field that question or I, I'm not sure who. Um... So I, I'll, I'll defer to one of the members of the legislature. Okay, that makes sense. Well, J well Jason, Jason's right. It, <clears throat> it's additional money. And so that's super important. And one thing, one point we tried to make was, you know, that we know all the tough things that have come from the pandemic, but there have been some positive things as well. And we have learned of, of a different way to reach more people throughout the pandemic and utilizing, like we're doing the rally today. Now we'd much rather do it in person. But the, the language specifically speaks to brain injury service contracts have not been adjusted to account for market changes, for starting salary. So individual starting salary have been far below market rates. So it is to try to get more folks to work with you and to help you to expand uh, opportunities to reach you. And then a million dollars from the general fund each year for an increase in funding for brain injury services. So some of this money had been allotted back in our original budget, and then during the pandemic unallotted, we, we allotted the money back originally and added 1.2 additional dollars. So it is, it, we try to keep it as broad as possible so we can get you the money and you can use it for things that will go the farthest, reach the most people, and do the most good. And, and we also know that that's not enough even though it's additional because we've heard from brain injury ambassadors telling us that it's not enough but it is what uh what we were able to do with the economic circumstances that we have and as far as the question about whether or not it's been passed so the governor has until the um 11 59 p.m on the 31st of march to sign all of the bills one of the bills is the budget bill I anticipate because we got some new money into Virginia from the American Rescue Plan that there may be amendments coming to the bill. So we may not finish it until we have reconvened session on April 7th. Um, and so then once it's signed and once all of the amendments are dealt with, it would go into effect for the July 1st um, start of the new budget year. Um, thank you all for all you've done. I mean, I know that you know, I usually go to Richmond every year. I really miss going this year. And um, I live in Northern Virginia, so I don't see y'all, but I see my Northern Virginia people. Um, and, you know, I know it's never enough, but we appreciate everything we do get. And um, it has been a hard year. So thank you for um, what you've done to give us additional money. Yeah, Tony, I echo what you're saying, which is that every little bit helps. And, um, you know, even though here at the Demi House, we're like a few miles away, we have an area that is, is considered unserved, has no services. And so I'm so excited about this new money that's, that has come through and what the possibilities are for people who literally may just be sitting at home without services right now. So um, that we're just, that's just fantastic. Thank you, Senator Price and uh, Delegate. I mean, Senator Mason and Delegate Price for answering us, for, for providing those, that explanation there. Are these, are any of these service contracts going to technical um, access, you know, ac better access in terms of Virginia? Uh, so do you, um, who would be best to speak on that? Um, so there, there are some parts of the contracts. I know that some of our the service providers, including those contracts, are doing some 
really unique things with some virtual services. For example, in Southwest Virginia, that's an area that is uh, really dependent on other, um, because it's so rural, it has not, not as much access. And so they're very, doing some really unique stuff with virtual services. Um, as an act, as a, Jason, do you wanna speak further on, on who's doing what with the money? Well, I think as, as Delegate Price uh, said, that the, the money isn't hasn't arrived yet, and it won't arrive till the start of uh, the new fiscal year. Um, but how it will work out is that the money goes to the Virginia Department of Aging and Rehabilitative Services, which is the lead state agency for brain injury. And, um, you know, the Virginia Brain Injury Council and the Virginia Alliance of Brain Injury Service Providers, the Brain Injury Association of Virginia will all provide some input um, and, and to how we think that money could best be distributed to, to reach its kind of maximum potential and help the most people. Uh, so I don't think we can really kind of fully answer that question yet because it's kind of uh, to be determined at this point. But I would imagine probably, you know, probably May, late May, early June, we'll probably have a, a much firmer picture of how that money is going to be distributed out and helping uh, citizens across Virginia with brain injury. Thanks, Jason. I was floundering. Let's be real. Needed to pass it to you. So it looks like I have a question from an old friend of mine who I've not seen in over a year. Joe Kinney, are you on here? You said you have your hand up. Yes. Am I, can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Okay. All right. Can you see me? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey, um, I, I wanted to ask about you know, how do we get the, uh, the MetaRide, you know, MetaRide people to honor the rides for the Denby House? I mean, that's, a, you know, uh, important to uh, some of us. That's a logistical issue with uh, the difference between being a, a provider on a waiver or not a provider on a waiver that we can probably work with you on to solve in a different kind of way, Joe, but I'm not sure that that's something that we can have somebody speak to right now on this call. Let's let's check back on that. Does anyone have any comments on transportation resources to uh, community-based programs? Joe, I don't have a specific answer to your specific question other than to, to reiterate that, that transportation is a huge issue and it's a huge barrier for full access and inclusion for people with disabilities. And that's something that we continue need to advocate for and to try to solve. Um, because if you can't get out in the community, um, then you're not a fully, fully a member of it. Uh, and and that's, that's something that I know so many of our folks struggle with is just how to get to the places they need to go. And, and again, for a lot of folks without disabilities, we, we take that access for granted, um, but it's access that's incredibly important and incredibly yeah. needed for people with disabilities. Uh, uh, it, it, does Moni uh, and uh, the uh, other lady, the representative, do they know about this? Do they know about uh, the so, transportation? So once again, Joe, who I was referencing earlier as my buddy I met the first year I ever did this, that's my nine-year friend right there, Joe Kenny, who always keeps me up to speed. And Joe, yes, indeed, we are. And Delegate Price worked really hard with us this year to help, for the first time ever, get dedicated funding sources for Hampton Roads Transit. So any city that's included in HRT, and it'll fall under our Transportation Accountability Commission, which I'm on, and we have already we have already dispersed the first tranche of about $25 million to try to get new buses, more buses, and to shore up the routes that we're running in Newport New anywhere Hampton Roads Transit operates, and that is Newport News. Um, so we're trying to increase the efficiency of the service and so what I'll do is we'll take away from here to go back and understand some of the specifics around the transportation to the Denby house, because, you know, for an example, we, we run, uh, we made sure we got a bus to run to Lackey free cl clinic and that now has a bus stop and we've continued to be able to do things like that. So Joe, we'll look at the specifics to the Denby house route, but I want you to know helps on the way because we've come up with a dedicated funding source. So, Thanks for keeping us in the know as always, my friend. Good to see you. 
It's good seeing you too, Monty, and thanks. Thanks, Joe. I hope we see you in person soon too. That'll be awesome. <laughs> Hopefully one day, right? And that's Senator why, Mason, thanks for that. That's why I'm bringing the question up. I know, I appreciate you know, it. I really do uh, appreciate it. Yeah. Um, we have one more question and then I'm gonna close this up for, cause I know we're past time, uh, the hour mark here. Uh, Lori Rogers, did you yeah. wanna ask a question? Hi. Did I unmute? Yes. yes, you did. You're good. Yes, hello. Um, I'm joining you as um, a caregiver who is now in her aftercare season. My son passed away in October and um, I was a full-time uh, caregiver, primary giver, caregiver, and his seriousness of his uh, injury pre precluded him from very many of the services or opportunities that you've discussed today. Uh, that's not a, that's not what I want to ask about. I wanted to ask about in my aftercare season because I'm still passionate about fighting for brain injury pa patients, brain injury caregivers, and brain injury awareness. Um, so I spoke last week to the North Carolina BIA and I was wondering, they mentioned that there was a certification as um, a brain injury specialist that was available, but because I wasn't employed as a brain injury person, although I worked 100% full time, practically 24 seven every year, every week, um, that I could take the class, not through them, I'd have to check with you guys, and but it wouldn't count. Now, in my after season, I'm looking for something. I'm 61 years old, my husband is ready to retire, and I don't qualify for anything. You know, I have no health care because I work for 11 years for David, my son, and I'm trying to find my feet and my path. So the question I guess I have is, do you have that certification available? And how, who would I work with to start looking for the new path that I'm on? Ann, do you wanna field that question? Sure, hey, Lori, it's Ann, how Hi, are you? Ann. So the brain injury specialist certification is really something that is a huge commitment and requires lots of study and lots of very technical knowledge. Yeah. There's also a brain injury fundamentals class that might suit your needs, but BIAB is also developing um, something that sort of meets in the middle. And if you want to give me a call at some point this week, feel free to do so. I would be very happy to talk to you about it. Um, we've got somebody developing some curriculum now, and maybe that's something that you could provide your voice into and, and maybe even add a little bit to the curricula. So why don't you give me a call and it'd be I'll great be to catch up with you. Thank you. You got my number? Um, you I'll can put it in the chat. To me. Thank you. <laughs> Oh yeah, I can email. Yeah, I'll put it in the I'm chat and I'll email you. Who knows where? <laughs> Sorry to be late. I'm trying Thank to, I'm trying to block. It's such a thing. It's hard on my PC. It was easy before, but not now. So I'm logging. And Facebook's really good for that. Um, hey. hey, Greg. Okay, well, thank you. I heard it talking about the bus, the, talking to Joe, right? The bus, the, the small buses, they don't pay as much as the big buses, the real buses. So they move from, they get for about a couple months, an hour, a year rather, and they're going to another place. I know that. But I love those little little buses. What do they call the little buses? Anyway, it's just, it's just when I go over there, they'll take me down to uh, our to Denby house, or my house, the Denby house, and back to house again. I like that. I really enjoy that. But I don't use as much as, I don't use as much as other people, but I really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. yeah, I really enjoy that. It's fantastic. I like it. They're from, Newport News, Hampton, Virginia Beach. Um, yeah. Those are like four little cities, but big cities. Um, number two, I want to say thank you for a Denby House. They helped me. I was really tough. It was hard. I think five, six years ago, it was really hard. I don't use as much, but I would like to go now and then. But thank you for all you guys who helped me. Thank you. That's all. Thanks, Greg. That was an awesome comment. So what Greg is referring to is the paratransit system here in Newport News and Hampton that is available to people who would like to come to the clubhouse um, that as an option, it is a good option. Um, I think he was talking about how uh, using that service is more expensive than using the regular bus line, but that it is an option available to our clubhouse members. Well, they're only 350 
There's twice a day they try to go out and get back and be seven o'clock. Yeah. Not that bad to me. Yeah. Well, thank you all for coming. I'm going to. Uh, Jessica. Have a, yes. This is Tony. Can I just bring up one other quick um, thing? Um, sure. I had just sent a message to Ann, but it's um, it came up in the legislative um, congressional briefing um, at Capitol Hill a couple of weeks ago um, on the um, on COVID and brain injuries. And I'm just wondering if, um, I, you know, Virginia, I'm, I know that Ann said that they're starting to look at it, but there's a huge amount of people, including myself, who are long haulers and have had brain injuries. Um, I have done a lot of research on it, um, have done some talk speech speaking on it um and it's a real problem and i think it's something that um someone there's some studies um money funding from the um that's going to nih and it would be really nice if someone in virginia could get some of that funding um, and do some research with TBIs and COVID um, a little closer, you know, close to us so that maybe we could take um, advantage of it because right now the only studies that are being done on long haulers are being done like in way far away. And I haven't seen any being done on TBI and COVID. So for anyone out there that um, knows anybody that um, works for any of the hospitals that do research, please, 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 please. There's what $1.2 billion in, I think. And did you want to speak to the funding? I think Tony was saying, she was saying that that was the amount of funding available right now. Um, yeah, I'm not sure where that pot of money you're talking about is coming from, from Tony. Um, the, the money that we're getting in Virginia is really just for the existing community-based brain injury programs to be able to offer their services better. Yeah. Um, I know that we've talked, uh, there's some talk about whether or not the Commonwealth Neurotrauma Initiative Trust Fund money could be used for specific COVID research and brain injuries. And I think that's an issue that's still being discussed. So I'm not sure. I know that there's some really good research being done. Um, but I, I, you know, I think we're still very much in the learning stage on a lot of this. And we're just going to have to see what happens over the next couple of years. Um, and so the money just went to NIH. Um, and there's um, requests for funding right now being sent out for it. And so that's why I'm saying, you know, if there's anyone that could do some studies, you know, specifically for TBIs and COVID in Virginia, it would be really helpful. I can, I, we can talk next week maybe about it, but. Okay, um, I'll nose around and see what I can find out. You know, I'm good at being nosy. Uh, yeah, you and me both, and I, yeah, and it's just something that's, you know, it's been one year for me now, and I'm still having issues, and I just, you know, it's put a cramp in my. <laughs> and I'm sure you, I'm sure you won't be the only one who um, is feeling the after effects and needs to see some movement on that front. Um, and can I, sure. can so I speak to that? Mm -hmm. This is Melissa. Sure. Mm -hmm. So um, I actually have a, I had a neuropsych and have a diagnosis of um, post-infection neurocognitive, mm -hmm. whatever, secondary to COVID. And I'm going to be going out to Denver to the Marcus um, Brain Institute or whatever it's called. But the, the NIH funding will be used by NIH. It was, it's, it's not like you can uh, apply for that monies 
you it's it's not something like that that can be applied for it's going to be studies conducted by NIH um, and they will choose they're going to choose sites where there is density within the the nation yeah this is such a large issue and I know it's one that we're going to be talking about for years to come um, so I, we, we need like a, a second and third meeting about it I'm going to wrap, wrap us up um, and then we will, this is what I'm going to do. I have a list of people to thank. I'm going to thank them quickly, even though they deserve longer. And then I'm going to let Denby House do their chant because I promised you. And then we're going to, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up here. So first of all, um, again, let me re reiterate, Tamika and Yamis, they were the quietest on this call, but they put in the most work and hours every single day trying to get ready for this rally. So Yamis Lawrence and Tamika Shelton at the Mill House. We really appreciate you too. They're, they're the unit coordinators of our advocacy and outreach units at the Mill House and, and at the Denby House. Um, Tim and Sherry, our MCs, can we just give them one of these? Because I just, that is such a hard job. And I just really appreciated them today. Um, Deborah, Andrew, Eric, Alfred, and the other uh, clubhouse members who put this together, who spent hours in meetings to make sure this would all go down. We thank you too. Um, BIAV staff, Amanda Ritchie, Laura Bennett, Aaron Tyra, uh, for collaborating, for helping on all the logistics. And then Jason and Ann, our fearless le leaders, we have to thank them as well. And um, I always think that we are happy for you to be Snoopy on our behalf at the Brain Injury Community and uh, keep yelling loudly too. I always am bragging on being in a state that has you. So I appreciate you and Jason as well for the same reasons. Um, and the entire CBIS staff teams, Denby House and Mill House, we appreciate you as well. I'm going to hand it over to the Denby House uh, for. I, I'd just like to say, um, yeah. Good job, Jason. Good job. Yeah, good job, Jason. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> you're right, though. I didn't yeah, give him enough knows. time in my moment. I, give him his yeah. time. But I, <laughs> I skipped over him. Uh, so, Denby House staff, if you were, I mean, um, Members, that everybody who's over there in the in the unit, if you want to go ahead and do your uh, your chant, that would be great. Deborah, can you lead off? Are you over there? Deborah had to leave. Some of our members had to leave. Their handwriting uh, showed up, but um, we just want to take the opportunity and say thank you again. And also, the reason that we're here is a call for action. So I know that we have more than night we had. We started off with 119 people. Right now, I'm not sure how many people are on here, but 80 something people. Everybody do one thing, go to the website, BIAV or Community Brain Injury Services and commit to doing something to advocate for our brain injury services. Give me one sec. She's heading over. She's making the, the trip from one room to another here in the clubhouse. <laughs> so we'll just give her a minute. Think about what's your one thing while, while she's making her trip over. The one thing you can do today to just support hey, Jessica. Advocate. Yeah. Um, can I just say thank you to, and I know you can probably thank your staff team too, but for decorating our clubhouse. I know that you guys maybe can or can't see our background, but our clubhouse is decked out in blue and green today. Um, so thank you to our staff team here and at the Denby House uh, for going out of their way and making sure that our clubhouse was decorated. Yeah. And um, blue is the color of the ribbon for uh, acquired brain injury awareness and uh, green for traumatic brain injury awareness. I have my bracelets shirt to, to support. Yamisa, are you ready over there? Yeah, we're ready. Okay, go for it. All right. We will, we will, we will. rock you. Thank you guys. Yay. We'll sign off now, but we appreciate everybody. Keep the conversation going. Let's see you.